insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 156, Teens and Materialism. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my generous and enterprising co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. Never thought I'd be described as enterprising, but here we are. Sure. You know how to make a buck, don't you? You do chores, you clean, you do various things to make a couple bucks here and there. Fair enough. That, by definition, makes you enterprising. All right. So we are back from an interminably long hiatus here. Yeah. Um, Our marching band schedule has just been killing us these last few weeks here. So we've been, I don't know, almost three weeks, four weeks now without a podcast. Yeah, it's been a bit. So um, we're probably still going to be kind of erratic for the month of October. And things probably will settle down for us in November. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably get back to our regular schedule in November. Hopefully. Got to get cracking on our holiday special. We haven't done anything on that yet. Yeah. Um, but we are here this week. Um, I don't know if we'll be here next week, so enjoy the show today. Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) So today we are talking teens and materialism. Teens today are often described as being the most materialistic generation in history. Whether this is accurate or not, it's hard to argue that many teens today do exhibit materialistic tendencies. On this episode of Insights into Teens, we'll explore teen materialism, we'll take a look at the contributing factors, and we'll look at how to help teens cope with materialism. Before we do that, though, I do want to take a moment to invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can also find video and audio versions listed under Insights into Things. And you can find us on pretty much anywhere you get a podcast. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, etc. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. Or you can find links to all of our social media on our uh, website. I have in my script on our web web. That's really not how that works. No. But our official website is www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? I think we are. Here we go. So our friends at VeryWellMind.com tell us about materialism. And they say materialism is the importance one places on material possessions. Pretty straightforward definition there. Yeah. These possessions could be anything such as clothes, shoes, handbags, cars, electronic equipment, gadgets, or anything else of that nature. One's home also counts as a material possession, even though everyone needs a place to live. However, people who tend to be more materialistic might view their home as a way to reflect their social status rather than serving as a place to dwell for shelter. Someone with a high level of materialism is often described as, quote, materialistic. They consider material possessions to be central to their life and their identity. They focus a good deal of their energy on acquiring possessions. Someone with a low level of materialism described is often described as, quote, non-materialistic or not materialistic. They don't consider acquiring possessions to be particularly important, although they vary in the extent to which they acquire material possessions in order to meet their objectives 
such as social acceptance. So causes of teen materialism, and this comes from a very similar website with a similar title of Very Well Family, which I'm pretty sure we've also probably used in the past. Materialistic children have less supportive parents. In a study of tweens and teens, parents who were emotionally unsupportive and more material had more materialistic children than supportive parents. By, su by support, we're talking about the ability for the parent to talk to, encourage, and be there for their child in good and bad times. Self-esteem is the key to understanding this finding. Supportive parenting increases adolescent self-esteem. Higher, the higher a child's self-esteem, the less likely they are to look to items to bring them happiness and a sense of worth. They get their self-worth from relationships instead. You can teach them the value of relationships by paying them with your time, energy, and interest. This will help them see their worth as a person. And even if you don't buy some things for them along the way, maintaining your relationship will lead to higher self-esteem, which can often lead to lower materialism. Materialistic children tend to have less supportive friends. Similar to the findings of parents, the support of peers is also important for counteracting materialism. In the study, kids with supportive parents had higher self-esteem, in turn, and fewer materialistic beliefs. Supportive friends are those who under, are understanding and who help out in times of need and who do not get angry or upset for no reason. Supportive friends also avoid rational aggression. R relational. Sorry. It's okay. We're, it's been a bit. Yeah, a little rusty here. Supportive friends also avoid ra relational aggression and subtle bullying. Encouraging your child to find and maintain these types of friendships may help your child think less materialistically. Along with being unsupportive, materialistic children also have, well, materialistic parents. Your own behavior also affects how much goods and money matter to your child. Children learn by watching, so if they see you valuing money as a source of happiness, they are likely to do the same. In addition, the researchers discovered that the more materialistic a parent was, the lower their child's self-esteem. Because low, low self-esteem is linked to higher materialism, it follows that materialistic parents had materialistic children. Materialistic children also have materialistic friends. Similar to the attitudes and behaviors of peers affect materialistic beliefs, the researchers found that adolescents with materialistic friends had lower self-esteem and, in turn, higher materialism themselves. Encouraging your child to find supportive friends who do not put high value on money and things may therefore help your tween avoid being consumed by consumption. I love that line. So let me ask you, do you think we live in a materialistic house here? Um, in certain aspects, yeah, probably. I would agree with you 100%. I am materialistic myself because I, I mean, you could just look at my Star Wars collection, you know. Or just take a look around the studio. Or just take a look around the studio. Um, but for me, the acquisition of these things is less about my status with other people because nobody comes over to look at my stuff. Um, then it is a comfort. It, it's sort of like a, a, a comfortable blanket for me. Yeah. You know, my home, our home is really what I wrap myself up in when I come home from work. And, and I enjoy being at home and being around these things because we've made an environment here that is conducive for comfort for me. You know, like I enjoy the technology that I have or I enjoy the video games that we have. They're all things that are for comfort for me. They have very little to do with how other people think of me. Like I don't buy, I don't buy things so that people think differently of me. Um, so I think the materialism that I suffer from 
And I say suffer because my collecting hobbies are very expensive. <laughs> so there's some suffering that goes on there. I think the materialism that I suffer from is less destructive from a social standpoint. Financially, it's a disaster. I can tell you yeah. that because it's like a, the amount of money I just saw, you know, Sideshow Collectibles just came out with two new Darth Vader statues that I want. And they're like $650 each. Mm. Now, I'll go out and spend $650 on those and never sell them. You know, even when they become, they go out of print and they're collectible and they double in price, I'll never sell them. So it's not even like it's an investment. It's literally just for my own edification. Yeah, and I think like a similar allegory can be said of me with clothes. While I certainly have, of course, the collector thing like you do, uh, I know a lot of people find materialism in clothing and like a lot of it, like we've talked in length about, you know, judging people by their appearance based on their clothing, like what kind of status they have there. I am materialist. I'm somewhat materialistic when it comes to clothing. I really enjoy hoodies and, and hitting the microphone hitting the over mic. and over. Um, Talk more with your mouth and, mouth and less with your hands. Or at least less with my left hand. Anyway, <laughs> so basically I have a set of clothing that I prefer to wear and I would normally just constantly have. Hoodies is probably the biggest example of it. But half the time, it's really not about what I think other people are going to say if I'm wearing a hoodie. A lot of the times, it's just for the comfort level. I enjoy having a pocket. It's nice to be warm, but also have the ability to, if I get hot, I can just take it off. Right. It's a lot more about the comfort level, and it's very similar to how you feel about you know your collectibles. Yeah, coming from a family that had very little um, as far as disposable income goes, and you know, we live paycheck to paycheck we had a single family income we've talked about it in the past i didn't have anything so what little bit you had you kind of held on to um and i grew up with four i was the youngest of four brothers so everything i got was either shared or it was handed down from someone else so it was very rare for me to get anything of my own um and i you know i make a joke now because like I was into computers when I was a kid and I never had, when I first got my computer, I didn't have a, a monitor. I couldn't afford a monitor. So I had to hook it up through this adapter called an RF modulator to a TV. And it wasn't the right hookup, but it was the only thing I could do to get it to work. And it looked terrible. You had lines through it. You had wavy lines. The colors weren't right. So you would sit there in front of the TV and, and, use the computer for a period of time and get a headache from it. Mm. And I make a joke now because I've got, what, six monitors in here. I've got six monitors on my one computer downstairs and a total of maybe eight monitors, ten monitors on my desk. So I'm overcompensating for some of the some of the things I had to endure as a kid. Yeah. Um, so I think part of my materialism stemmed from literally having nothing as a kid and and fortunately i can afford these things now so i i overindulge in them sometimes i think mm. do you think you're materialistic other than the clothes um probably i do find i am a collector of sorts similar to how both you and mommy are and that I like to kind of decorate my room with it. While I don't have one specific hobby that I decorate my entire room with, I find other hobbies and, like, I like the collectibles. And, again, it is the comfort level. I am probably a lot more picky when spending my money because... Because it's your money. Yeah. You're a lot less picky when it's our money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest there. Yes, it's true. So do you think materialism can have a positive side to it i mean yeah there um a lot about like a lot of things we talk about on this podcast there's good and bad to come with it and like you can't go from it's best to stay in the middle of the scale if you tip too far down the one side something bad's gonna happen if you're too far up on the other side something bad's gonna happen and really you gotta find that perfect balance so materialism with balance 
is a good thing. Yeah, it can be. Okay, I'll buy that. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about why materialism is bad. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about teens and materialism. Honestly, it kind of seems like every time we have a topic, it's just teens and... Teens and something. Well, Insights in the Teens, what do you expect? Well, fair. So now we're going to talk about why materialism is bad. And this comes to us from... Really should have asked what this was. Help. Uh, Vishal Vizhal... I don't know. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, put it in the show notes. So sorry I can't pronounce it. So, they say, uh, materialism changes you in unexpected ways. It badly affects your emotional and mental well-being without you knowing it. It harms your way of looking at life. Materialism brings several pains along with it, so here are some simple clues to help you understand how worse it can be. First up is that you define your value in terms of the objects you own. In the course, you lose your authenticity, self-belief, and think your worth is only equal to the price tag of your t-shirt. You get stuck in a never-ending comparison. The possibility that your lawn is less green keeps you, re keeps you relentless and insecure. You stop sleeping well at night, which is a bit extreme but i guess can be fair <laughs> your self-esteem shatters when you don't meet your own unrealistic expectations fair even if you're blessed with ambiance abundance even if you're blessed you could be blessed with ambiance too <laughs> i don't know even if you're blessed with abundance you become blind to your own goodness you dilute yourself delude you don't dilute, dilute it i'm not, sorry you're not a liquid <laughs> <laughs> it looks so similar. It's a, no. You delude yourself by buying more stuff and thinking you're closer to happiness than before, even when you're not. You remain unhappy for insensible reasons. Let's see how bad I can murder this. <laughs> you get fooled by advertisements and hypocrisy around you. You stop using your senses and remove your wallet without a second thought. You become desperately poor, not because you don't have enough, but because you develop a hunger that you can't that can't be satisfied. You keep demanding more, getting stuffed with selfishness, and show no trace of contentment, so you suffer more due to such behavior. You feel grateful for nothing. You stop appreciating what you already have because it's not as good as what you want, therefore you're busy chasing the next shiny thing. You crave external appreciation and wait to be noticed by others. You put your efforts to impressing towards impressing others, even when it doesn't serve a purpose. You keep feeling incomplete, unsuccessful, and dissatisfied, and you carry the same feelings with you till the end. You disturb your well-being through your attachment to your bank account. You become too dependent on your possessions as you try to define yourself through them, which arouses mental and, emo and emotional instability. You fall prey to negative feelings such as greed, jealousy, and hatred, as you often see others, as you often see others as a part of your race, and you don't want them to win. You know the whole 
Uh, it's not a competition unless I'm winning thing. You're saying I'm materialistic because of that? <laughs> that just means I'm competitive. I don't know. It just sounds it just sounds way too similar to that. You compromise your values and principles for gains. Soon, the gap between right and wrong starts to fade you. for you. You lose your true identity. Then you try to become what others want you to become, not what you hope to become. You spend your resources on temporary pleasures and lose the opportunity of making a change in your own and others' lives. So you neglect the bigger picture. You become blind to the qualities of people and judge them based on their earnings and financial status. This only makes you look pompous and arrogant. You limit your perception to the monetary side of life, after which you stop seeing all other ways to happiness and success. You see no other way to prove yourself or to estimate your success, and therefore cling to the path you're already on. You unknowingly manipulate your own emotions and hence gather regrets and pains as time passes. You trap yourself within the life you choose and only find nothingness, despair, and meaningless when you and, and meaninglessness when you look back. It can be miserable when you have almost no memories. So that, that sounds pretty bleak there. I mean that's <laughs> That's some dark stuff. Yeah, r way more dark than I remember it being when I typed it up. Yeah. Um, do you feel any of that based on the materialistic tendencies that we've already discussed that you and I both have? Well, let's go down the list real quick. So you define your value in terms of the objects you own. We kind of both specified we don't really do that, and it's really just for the comfort level. Right. So I don't think either of us are to that extent of it. You get stuck in a never-ending comparison. I mean, I never, really, I never really compare myself and what I have to others other than, like, oh, my God, they have a cool SpongeBob thing or something. Right. Like, what about you? I used to as a kid because having nothing and having a friend whose parents bought him everything, it... It, it, it tends to wear on you as a kid. Uh, as an adult, not so much anymore. You know, and I'm the type of person that if I want something, I go buy it. Then I figure out how to pay for it. Hmm. So, as an adult, you can make that mistake. Okay. Uh, then we have your self-esteem shatters when you don't meet your own unrealistic expectations. This has nothing to do with my materialism. It just happens that I have that. That's not exactly... I don't think that's a fault of my materialism. Yeah. It's just I have my own unrealistic expectations that if I don't meet them, I crush myself over it. I'll buy that. Then we have you delude yourself by buying more stuff and thinking you're closer to happiness than before, even when you're not. Yeah, see, I never really gain happiness from the things that I buy. Usually the things that I buy, I buy for comfort or I buy for utility. Yeah. And, yeah, half the time I'm, like, already stressed when I buy stuff because it's like, oh, my God, am I going to ever use this? Am I just going to completely forget about it? Is it worth it? Yeah, you tend to be much more discriminating in the things that you buy. Yeah. So I don't think either of us really fall into most of these categories. Is there any categories that you feel you fall into? Um... Again, really just the category, uh, again, being technically more miserly with my money, I'm not as materialistic. I certainly hold value, like, here's the thing. So, I, I definitely know I'm materialistic, but not in the ways that most people would assume being materialistic is. I'm not the type of kid that would go up and, like, ask you to buy me something. If anything, I have my own money and I go buy it. And I ask you if I can buy something. Right. It's kind of a reverse of what, like, the normal psychology is. That's true. And I also have kind of realized that the way that I connect with people or things that I hold dear are physical possessions from people. So I know I'm materialistic in the sense that it's, quote unquote, my love language, even though he hasn't been talked about that yet. So Dude, I, spoilers. I don't even know when we're going to get to that. That's a future podcast. We'll get to it. <laughs> So, yeah, I know it's kind of similar. I know, like, I have that kind of form where it's like I definitely value 
Like, I get my own... I can buy my own stuff, but when other people get, like, stuff for me or give me small little trinkets, I value them a lot more. Because, like, I have an entire thing on my desk that's dedicated to little trinkets all my friends have given me. Like, I literally... So, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you feel grateful for the things that you have right now? Definitely. And yes. and do you crave external appreciation to be noticed by and wait to be noticed by others? Honestly, not really. I don't like buy stuff because I want other people to think it I'm cool. I buy stuff because I think the stuff is cool. Okay, and I'll and I'll, I'll second that. I think that you're right on the money there. Um, and I don't do it because I don't like other people playing with my toys so yeah and you I, don't always seek other people's approval in no a lot of cases um how about neglecting the bigger picture do you think your materialism makes you neglect the bigger picture where you don't really understand why you have the things or the impact that it takes to acquire those things do you think you're missing the bigger picture i mean i know that like I know that I definitely understand the consequences of buying certain things and then it's like maybe your money could be better spent elsewhere, yada yada. And a lot of that, it like really goes into my mind system when I'm going to buy something. It's like I'll normally scound around. I don't normally find whenever we're at like conventions, I don't normally find stuff of my interest. When I do, it's like, eh, do I really want to spend my money on this? And like I have an internal debate for a decent amount of time before I determine if I'm going to buy it or not. It's interesting you mentioned the conventions, because I think that's really a great way to highlight this. We go to conventions not as frequently as we used to, thanks to COVID, but we're getting back into the swing of things. And the primary reason that I go to these conventions is to peruse the vendor tables and to buy stuff. I don't go for guest appearances or getting signatures or any, any of the other stuff that conventions too. I mean, we'll sit in on panels from now and from time to time. Yeah. But what I take away from those conventions is less the things that I buy, because I'll go to 10 conventions and, and buy something at two. What I take away from it is that experience, you know, and that's, that's the rewarding thing for me. If I happen to pick a couple of things up, that's great. The last three things that we went to, I don't think I, I bought stuff but it was stuff for other people. Yeah. You know, the last time at the one toy show, the antique toy show we went to, I bought three things there and gave everything away. Um, so it's almost, for me, it's the, at those, it's the joy of haggling. But it's really that experience of going to a, a show or going to a, uh, a convention with my family and enjoying that time and picking up something here and there. So I don't, think that's a reflection of materialism as much as it's a reflection of my appreciation for family time. Yeah, and I know conventions can certainly seem like it's very materialistic. There's people that will go there and strictly buy stuff and not really take too much of the atmosphere in. However, these conventions are like great places because you get to see like geek culture or some obscure obscure culture being like shown and being like very appreciated and 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 like in the past that kind of stuff was supposed to be nerdy you made fun of people because they liked it and now you have such a huge extent of people who are such geeks that like it's like amazing to see like all these people it's i find it really cool to see some of the really cool costumes yeah. some of the background setups that they have for photos it's like really fun to go and see that atmosphere of it absolutely ultimately what it comes down to and this is the last question and then we'll we'll take a quick break do you trap yourself within the life you choose and find only nothingness, despair, and meaninglessness. Meaningless. I still can't say it. <laughs> meaninglessness. Thank you. <laughs> Do you find that that's the situation that you're in? Not really, actually. Like, and, I mean, I feel that in other senses, but when it comes to materialism, no. Uh, we'll have podcasts on those later. Yeah. Uh, so, so my advice to people is if you do feel that, you probably want to get some help. Yeah, if you're really in 
like a really bad pit when it comes to that always get like some form of medical help yes and we're going to take a quick break and come back and we're going to talk about some of that help that you actually can get all right it's a good segue there <laughs> i know right we'll be right back Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about teens and materialism. And now we're going to talk about how to get help... <laughs> no. How to help a teen dealing with materialism. I really should read from the script occasionally. That's a good idea. That's what we write it for. <laughs> yeah. And this comes to us from MiddleEarthNJ.org. They say it's difficult to keep teens out of the materialistic trap because of our society's increasing culture of buying more, the targeted advertising to teens and young, adult, and young adults, and teens' desire to fit in with their peers. However, their spending habits are not fully formed. Parents and other adults have the ability to shape their thoughts and decisions on materialism before they get themselves into debt or in other trouble. Following some ideas and raising teenagers to avoid... Following... Fo um. Use all the words. That's what they're there for. They don't cost extra. My apologies. <laughs> you still can't say meaninglessness. Yes, I can. Following are some ideas for raising teenagers to avoid the materialism trap. The first they have is model simplicity. Children are more likely to... In yeah. Imitate. Thank you. It's not meaninglessness. -ness 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 -ness. <laughs> Imitate what they see than what they hear. The best way to reach your teen on this subject is to model for them the joys and benefits of intentionally living with less. Clean out your closets. Don't run out and purchase the newest gadget. Explain your decision making to your teen as you carefully choose your possessions. Next up is to encourage idealism. Many teenagers desire to find a cause that can change the world, but their ideas can be quickly dismissed by adults. No matter how far out or naive the idea, encourage your teen. Allow teenagers to dream bigger, to dream bigger dreams than the mansion, fancy wardrobe, and sports car. If they say they want to feed all the starving in Africa, listen to their ideas without inserting too much reality, and then volunteer with them at the local food bank. If they grow up thinking about making a difference in others' lives, then they will be more likely to act on those ideas as an adult and feel good about themselves. Volunteer as a family. Invest your energies into helping other people. Shifting your focus onto the needs of others can encourage gratitude for what you have and replace materialism. Lead your family to offer your time in the community by working in a local food bank or other organization that serves the underprivileged. Watch less television. Boy, if that's solid advice, that's the most solid <laughs> advice I think we've ever given around here. Hmm. This serves a dual purpose. First, it limits the amount of advertising your teen sees, which has a major impact on their spending habits. Second, it allows them to spend more time thinking about being creative. Identify ad messages. Even if you limit your TV time, advertisements can never be completely avoided. So teach your teenager to read behind the marketing message. Ask questions like, what are they really trying to sell you with this advertisement? 
Do you think that product will deliver on its promise? You should also discourage entitlement. Clearly, parents must provide their children the basic necessities in life, food, shelter, clothing, and so forth. And of course, parents should take joy in giving their teens nice gifts on their birthdays and holidays. <clears throat> However, many parents feel compelled to provide kids with their every whim and want. Instead, we should just do two things. One, demonstrate the truths of responsibility, showing that it's hard work to maintain our possessions cleaning houses, repairing cars, etc. And two, require your teen to purchase expensive items with their own money, which will provide them more fulfillment and a better understanding of the relationship between work and money. Expose them to the less fortunate. Our world has wide-ranging economies. Expose your teens to the lives of other people who live off of sustainability... Sus sustainability... What? Substantially. Substantially. Low. that one pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Meaninglessness. -ness -ness. <laughs> Substantially lower incomes than Americans, but in many ways seem happier. Obviously, it would be great to travel to poor countries to see it firsthand. But for most people, that is not feasible. You could still rent a documentary or research information online. Establish goals and challenges. Many people will try to use possessions to fill a void within themselves. The problem is that stuff can't do that. Teach your teen to establish their own personal goals and challenges so that they can base their self-worth on their actions rather than their possessions or the ad admiration of their friends. You should also avoid the status game. Be sure to model inclusiveness into your teen. Is that good? That was bam, right on. <laughs> cool. Seek friends from all social classes, and make sure you do not insinuate that you consider one person more worthy than another based on their money or profession. And finally, you should be supportive. A recent study found that teenagers with supportive parents and, and friends have higher self-esteem, which makes them less materialistic, kind of what we said earlier. Children with lower self-esteem valued possessions significantly more than children with higher self-esteem. So parents, be supportive of your children. And like, even not just for the whole materialistic thing, you should really just be supportive of your kids no matter what, but you know. Amen to that. Ultimately, it's important for parents to teach teenagers that what matters most is who they are, not what they own. Value your teen's character, dreams, talents, so that they can see their happiness is not determined by their possessions. Teach them to pursue their greater the greater things in life. And, you know, I think the one thing that, that is a recurring theme with this topic is materialism often psychologically re is a replacement for self-esteem. So kids that have low self-esteem tend to be more materialistic. The problem necessarily isn't the materialism. It's the low self-esteem. Yeah. So you don't need to attack necessarily the materialism to solve the problem. Find out why their self-esteem is low and help them with that. Yeah. Because low, as we've talked about several times on this podcast, there are a lot of other things that can come out of low self-esteem. Materialism obviously is one of them. So if, you're, if your teen is experiencing low self-esteem, that's where they need to get help. And that's where they need support from their parents. Yeah, and like you and I have kind of demonstrated here, materialism isn't always bad. People can still be somewhat materialistic, but not in negative ways that are caused due to low self-esteem. Yeah, and there's two really good examples that we have here fairly recently. So one was a school trip, okay? So, so and not a school trip, but... A trip overseas that's being sponsored by someone from your school and you showed interest in going now it's you know a trip to japan it's not cheap you got a few years to save for it and, and get it paid off and stuff like that tell us about that what was the arrangement that we came to with that that we wanted you to, to kind of get a lesson from so basically, in order to help pay off 
um, the price for the trip, I had to pay a certain amount that I'm not going to specify on here uh, a month from the pay that you guys normally give me for chores that would amount to a certain part to a certain extent of the amount that you guys had to pay for Japan in order for me to learn how to gain my own money in order to you know ultimately learn a lesson of earning the trip right so essentially you're you're covering 25 percent of the cost of the trip and mommy and daddy are going to cover the rest not because we couldn't afford to do it but because it's something that you wanted and in earning that money to pay for it gives you a new appreciation for that experience. You're going to, rather than just attend and be a body there, you're going to be, a t you know, part of that experience now. Uh, so it was, it was for your benefit. The other one was more recent. So we, you and I just upgraded our phones. So the deal was, you know, your phone was several versions behind and you had a choice to make whether you were going to put money out for it or not talk about that one real quick basically it's supposed to be for the different versions i don't exactly remember what but it was basically you get the regular version of the phone you get a, and then you get slightly better versions of the phone and like there's two different forms of each right so the idea was that if you just wanted the base upgrade phone from what you had, because all you had was the base phone before, I'd cover the cost. Mommy and, and Daddy would cover the cost. Yeah, and then if I wanted anything extra, I'd pay the extra cost. Right, so if you wanted more memory, if you wanted the bigger screen, if you wanted the plus model or whatever it was, you just had to pay the difference, and I'd still cover the cost. We would still cover the cost of the base model. You elected not to do that because you were perfectly fine with the base model. Yeah. I bring up the phones because nowadays your cell phone in today's society is very much used as a status symbol. Yeah. Everybody wants the latest and greatest. They want the biggest phone. They want the flip phone. They want the one that jumps up and down and walks around and makes your coffee and all that stuff. And whoever has that, people feel as though that it makes them important or makes them special or other people want to be like them. And it's like... Dude, it's a phone. Yeah, like, the main purpose of the phone was really just so that you had contact with people. I mean, the only reason, the main reason you guys got me a phone when I was younger was because I ended up getting lost and you wanted to make sure I had a contact. Right. Yes, thank you for reminding us about how bad of parents we were. Appreciate okay, that. it is not that bad. It wasn't <clears throat> necessarily our fault. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I think the message to walk away from here is materialism is not necessarily the problem. It's a symptom of the problem. Yes. So if you feel that your teen is materialistic, take a look at what their self-esteem is. Take a look at what kind of friends they're hanging out with. Take a look at yourself as the parent. Yeah. Because it might be you who's having that influence on them unintentionally. And you may be completely unaware of it, but a lot of times our kids emulate our own actions and, and a lot of times parents have bad habits and yeah. we can pass them on to our teens. Yeah, much like how they ended up talking about earlier how adults don't tend to listen to kids because kids seem to have these extreme views. A lot of, and like we've also talked about there's also the phrase of always, like, the parent's always right or something. Well, that's never the case or, around here with me. <laughs> and then it's like, well, or just, like, adults have this bias to kids because they think that they're right because they're older and, quote-unquote, more mature. Yes. No, that is not the case in a lot of... I wasn't instances. saying yes, it was true. I was saying yes, that is the case. That's well, the perception that a lot of people have. Yeah, that's the perception that a lot of people have. And while it can be true in certain instances, adults also have a lot of problems that they go unchecked with. Absolutely. But that's not what this podcast is about. Because it would be endless if it was. Yeah. It'd be interesting if we did a reverse on that. <laughs> New podcast idea, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so I think that's all we had today. We're going to take a quick break, come back, get your closing remarks, and finish up the business of the podcast. All righty.
All right, so just to reiterate some facts that we stated. Materialism, while it can certainly seem like a problem, is really just a symptom of a much larger issue that we've talked about on the podcast and should also really be resolved. A lot of the causes really just initially stem from low self-esteem, and if low self-esteem can be fixed, then maybe materialism can also be fixed. And while there are definitely individual stuff that can be helped with materialism, also know that materialism isn't all that bad. When it's given the right balance, much like everything in life, it can be, it can be pretty beneficial. All right. Well said. Thank you. Uh, before we do go, I want to once again implore our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast if you're not already subscribed to it. Uh, you can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Audio and visual versions of this podcast can be found listed as Insights into Things. And you can find us anywhere you get a podcast. Uh, Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, give us your suggestions for topics you'd like us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us up on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can also find high-res versions of all our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can find links to all those and more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, I assume is still being hosted by you and Mommy. At some point in time, yeah. At some point in time. We're still taking a break from that, I assume. And of course, our Not Really Monthly podcast, because it's been a while, hosted by you and I think my brother Sam still. <laughs> yep, Sam. Pretty much somewhere in there. All right. Anyway, that's it, folks. Thanks for listening. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.